what's up guys so it's sunday morning i'm here stayed in west hollywood uh, had a great podcast uh, this morning with d murphy great guy uh, but had a great story like it's just a ton of different struggles obstacles things that they um, went through as they built their company over the last you know 16 years like six different brands ton of stuff going on but man it's just a very very genuine conversation that i really really enjoyed and i definitely want to connect you guys with all the stuff that he has going on uh, there's a lot but that's it we're about to kind of head around here hope you enjoy this conversation with d murphy Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary V, and it's time for the daily bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket, cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way, not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward, right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry, cause it's time for the daily bread. Appreciate you being on. Thank you, brother. First off, appreciate uh, it. But man, tell everybody who you are and uh, kind of a little bit of your your story as uh, to what got you here. Yeah, so my name is D, obviously. Uh, and at USC, a friend of mine and I uh, kind of started a brand, a fashion brand, as a senior project for mm -hmm. the entrepreneurship program. Yeah. You had to write a business plan, and we were like, oh, fashion seems like there's a lot of stupid people in it. We should we should do that. And we were like, this is 2002, so there was a recession. Okay. And so we kind of knew we weren't going to get jobs. So we were like, all right, let's 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 figure this out. So we end up graduating. Um, while we're on campus, we start printing T-shirts through the yellow pages. Like we literally are looking for screen printers, yeah. embroiderers. And uh, we, we make a bunch of shirts. We start going to stores locally in L.A. Stores start picking us up immediately. Because we just walked in and said, hey, do you want to carry the yeah, brand? And they're absolutely. like, yeah, sure. You guys look like you're young guys. We'll give you a shot. <laughs> yeah. And retail was totally different. So people would give people shots. And, you know, we, we end up launching the brand in college. And then we graduate. And we were like, we have to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and really, because there was no jobs anyway. Sure. So we were like, we might yeah, as well yeah. do this. Give it a shot. So, you know, we max out some credit cards and say, screw it. Let's see what happens. And uh, August of 2002, there's a trade show called Magic that everyone fashion attends. Yep. <laughs> and we were like, oh, my God, dude, we're going to be rich in three like, months. Our biggest problem is going to be fulfilling these orders. Yeah. <laughs> so we go there for four days and we get $5,000 of orders. <laughs> yes, and it's yes. literally the most depressing thing on earth. I mean, a funny story. My mom literally had to fly to Vegas to buy us lunch awesome. and pay the bill for the show because we couldn't afford it. But um, th I think the cool thing about it was it was still a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, sure. and people always say how hard those things are. So we end up launching and, uh, you know, we struggled. And it literally, well, that was 16 years ago. So the business has gone through many iterations. Mm -hmm. We started as a traditional wholesale men's brand, yeah. selling to the best stores in the country. Then mm -hmm. we got into specialty retailers. Then we got into department stores like yeah. Macy's and Nordstrom's. And then recession hits. Yeah calamity for our business um, people owed us money people mm -hmm. went bankrupt and then people just returned yeah like it was crazy it was just every day was just a bad set of news yeah and so we were just sitting there and we were like man we finally got momentum this is seven years in okay. and we still haven't caught a break yet so what I, what I wanted to talk about was those those early years mm -hmm. we had all these stages of doing what everyone said that you should do like wholesale retail yeah. all these different avenues direct there was obviously some struggle there one of my favorite lines is that every successful person has a painful story yeah and the part we always add on to that is will your painful story have a successful ending 
Um, so what were some of those painful stories in the beginning um, that really made you who you are today and looking back now you know those things happen for you not not to you yeah I think you know I think the most uh, challenging part of those early years and I'm going to just be very specific mm-hmm. is lawsuits yeah um, there was so when we graduated we were 21 years old and uh, we went to USC and a lot of people in USC gra- alumnus were in fashion mm. so we got introduced to them yeah. and a guy goes oh I'll help you make something mm. so we, we needed help making some t-shirts and some hoodies and uh, I couldn't pay him <laughs> it was $6,500 and I said hey can I pay you $500 a month yeah. you know just like put it over a year sure said no and he sued me <laughs> This is an alumnus of my school who's yeah. extremely wealthy, yeah. inherited the bu- inherited the business from his dad, so he's not even <laughs> like a true like like you should have compassion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we got sued, and I was like, wow, that really happens. Mm. And you know, it's funny is every kind of dip in our business that we were faced with that happened again, really? and no one showed any compassion. There are people who showed compassion, sure, and there's a lot of people who did it, and. Mm. Uh, that's really what took me by surprise. And I mm. think lawsuits scare a lot of people because yep. you don't know how they're going to end up sure. and you don't know the legal process. And, and, and that continued to happen throughout our... That mm. was honestly one of the most painful things yeah. because the, you know, a, a, a retailer can return, screw me, go mm-hmm. bankrupt, and not pay me. Yep. Me, when I ask, can I pay you over the year, <laughs> and I promise to yeah, pay you, yeah, and yeah. by the way, charge me interest, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I, it's my fault. There was no compassion, and so so I, I continued to get frustrated with that over over the and it would be like what it literally would be like why us like what did we do wrong yeah and you know what I mean like I yeah. would always have those moments of like frustration where I was like man I would literally like go cry at, yeah. at my parents' house and I'm like I don't understand what we're doing wrong yeah and you know we did everything you're supposed to do we treated people well and we still got mm-hmm. the short end of the stick. And so th- that's a pain that I still, even to this day, like I was just telling somebody the other day, we got sued for the most nonsense thing <laughs> recently. Yeah. And instead of 6,500, it's in the millions now. It's just, yeah. that's all it is. Yeah. And it's like, it's frivolous, oh, but yeah. that's just how, like, why would you waste your energy and time into mm-hmm. the universe exactly. putting that out? Like I would never, there's so many times where everyone in my company, like you need to sue this person. Mm-hmm. I'm like, for what? Yeah. Like, it's such bad waste of energy yeah, and time. Yeah, like, right. we could be doing something positive. Look, if if, it, if the universe all balances itself out, mm-hmm. we got taken here for some money, <laughs> we'll get it back somewhere else. Absolutely. You know, we survived this long for that for that reason. Mm-hmm. So, like, but it's still frustrating when it keeps happening. Yeah, oh, yeah. What was one thing going through this process of trial, trial and error, trying, trying all these different avenues or different business models, what was one thing that you quit doing? during that process that you think helped you to succeed? Like one mindset or one just area that when you cut that part out, things started changing. So uh, this particular thing has continued to happen throughout our uh, journey is, and then we go off track and we have to keep going, is lack of focus. Hmm. So when we start seeing success, yeah. we go nuts. Yeah. We're like, oh, this worked, let's go do 50 of them. Yeah. Not just let's nail yeah. this. And so, you know, the last five, six years is a great example. Subscription hit. Mm-hmm. Then our shoe brand hit. And then we're like, let's do this brand. Let's do that brand. Yeah. Let's do that. So we launched six brands. Hmm. Can they all work? Yeah, I think over time they'll all work. Did yeah. we have to launch all of them within 18 months? <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Yeah, yeah. That's probably not the smart thing to do. <laughs> so I think that lack of focus, every time we see this like scale in our business, mm-hmm. we lose focus. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I always use the example. I'm like... Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola for 100 years just did Coke. Yep. And then one day they're like, let's do Diet Coke. Mm-hmm. And then they went nuts after all those years. And I think those some of those old school companies still get it right. Like yeah. even Red Bull. Yeah. They just do Red Bull. Yeah. They're not trying to like sell you everything. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're going to crush Red Bull. That makes sense. And not even the 14 other flavors that, you know, those <laughs> came later. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a constant uh, issue with entrepreneurs because we're – we're incapable of managing and running a business. We always want to be creating. Yeah, yeah. And that's my problem is that like, I don't want to sit, we have mm-hmm. 180 employees. I don't want to sit and manage a 180 employee business yeah. day in and day out. That's, that's, that's not fun. Yeah. You know, creating is fun. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's always a challenge. Yeah. And, and with that, I mean, 
there's so much in there that's um, that's true. So being managing people, mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's a whole other animal. Yeah, and you become just this person that puts out fires. Yep. every day. What's some ways that you've or some things that you've implemented on kind of like your daily routine to make sure that your main priorities are getting taken care of to where when you get to the office it's not all this stuff coming at you that you've got to just handle reactively that you're able to kind of prioritize your day and get stuff done. So I think I've just come accustomed to the fact that if you're a CEO of a business, you're also the therapist yeah. of the business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is just a part of daily life for you. Mm -hmm. um, you have managers, you have folks that are, are you know going through things, are frustrated, may have a personal issue, may have an issue internally with people. And I just know that's a part of my life now, yeah. and I can't avoid it. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, and I rather just confront it now mm -hmm. and deal with it before I'd kind of hide from it. Yeah. As like when I was learning how to be a manager of people, yeah. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to deal oh, with yeah. Joey. He's just <laughs> driving me nuts. Like you know, yeah, absolutely. like I'll just put it off. And then you know, we, we when we hired our HR team a few years ago, they made us just like you need to go talk to him right now. I was like, okay. So like that really changed the way yeah. we handle those types of issues because before it was always avoiding it because yeah. it's not fun. Yeah, it's not. No, it's absolutely. confrontation about someone's weaknesses are not fun to have. Obviously, starting an apparel company right now is very um, kind of a trendy thing to do, and, yeah. and a very, quite frankly, for someone to s kind of start their entrepreneurial journey, yeah, it's a very cost-effective thing to try. Yeah, low right? barrier to entry. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're just. Um, you know, just creating a little Shopify store. And, yeah. Um, what What's the biggest piece of advice that you would give someone that legitimately thinks that they might have some interest in pursuing a career? Mm -hmm. Like we went to dinner last night with a guy um, that's in the process of starting an apparel company. What's one piece of advice that you would give someone to avoid or make sure that you do this or at least come into the situation with kind of this mindset? Yeah, so I think the the, the low-hanging fruit of that question is – if you're entering uh, men's fashion, for example, mm -hmm. uh, there's very little on the product side you're going to do that's going to be unique. Yeah. There's just not. The same thing. Guys have been wearing the same thing for like 80 years. <laughs> so you're not going to do anything that unique yeah. there. So then it becomes, is your distribution unique? Mm -hmm. Okay, so most of the retailers that would have normally carried probably don't exist. So it's probably going to be direct to consumer. Yeah. Um, so what's unique about it? Um, and then it becomes price. Where are you going to sit in price? Mm -hmm. Are you really expensive? Are you really cheap? Are yeah. you in the middle? If you're in the middle, you're kind of dead. Yep. Nothing in the middle is working right now. Yep. So I think you got to really then hone in on what story you're telling and what's your brand brand kind of Bible. Yeah. Because that's really what's going to connect you with a, a customer. Mm -hmm. That you stand and represent for something that some other brand doesn't. And I think that's what a lot of kids like. They'll do graphic tees and hoodies. Okay, yeah. cool. The most eye-opening experience for me was when we were in Macy's, the first delivery we ever t shipped with Macy's. It was like over 12 years ago. We were at the Beverly Center in L.A. We had this huge section. Jeans, jackets, shirts. And I was so happy because it was like a lifelong. I mean, yeah. I used to steal from Macy's as a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, man, we made it. We're going to be <laughs> we're in Macy's. I walk in and I walked in, I think, with my business partner and some, few, some, uh, some people that work with us. And I was like, why the hell is anyone buying 5-4 here? I mean, like, Ralph Lauren's 50% off right now. Mm. And I just couldn't figure it out. I literally yeah. was like, I'm like, this isn't going to work. Yeah. None of this is going to sell. There's nothing unique about anything we're doing. They just liked our brand. Yeah. And so that really is such a hard thing. Because, so like, if you're charging $20 for a T-shirt, people, when you're, when you're creating it, you're like, this is the greatest graphic T-shirt yeah, ever. Yeah. And then, you know, because kids will DM me all day, like, what do you think about my graphics? And mm -hmm. I don't have the heart to tell them. I'm like, uh, <laughs> it kind of sucks. <laughs> like, because, but maybe if the marketing or the story is there, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you'll connect maybe with the people. right person wears it. Yeah, right person wears it. I'm like, yeah, do you know Kanye West? Because <laughs> yeah. if he wears it, yeah, yeah, and you know what? The whole world, yeah, you have a chance. But, like, that's the reality is, like, you, but the, 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 the flip side of that is, because you get to talk directly to the customer now, mm -hmm. you could create whatever story you want and connect yeah. to them. I think the, the problem is, is from a product price and distribution, you have to have some uniqueness mm -hmm. that I think most people don't understand. They're like, I just create these really cool hoodies. Yeah. Well, I'm like, hey, if you're charging $50 for a hoodie, think for one second, what can I get for 50 bucks? <laughs> I can get a pair of Stan Smith Adidas for yeah. fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. So like that's what you're up against. Like, are you? <laughs> do you sense. think? Do you think you're competing? You're better than what they're selling. Mm -hmm. You can get Adidas hoodie. You can get a yep. hundred things. So, 
Um, you can get a round of drinks at the bar. We'll mm-hmm. give more joy than most people, <laughs> right? So it's like all those things to me, like makes sense. you, you got to really hone in on all those things. And then if the marketing is good, doesn't matter. I mean, like at the end of the day, if you look at Red Bull, Coca-Cola, Nike, yeah. Apple, yes, they make all great products. But their branding and marketing is yes, flawless. You have to emotionally connect to the customer. If you do that, it doesn't matter what you sell. Right.